Welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast with Jacob Ayers, providing actionable content to help you along your journey to financial freedom through real estate investing. As the premier asset class, real estate has helped ordinary people just like you amass fortunes. The benefits of passive income from real estate investing will allow you to live a life you want. And now your host, entrepreneur, real estate investor, and apartment deal syndicator, Jacob Ayers. episode 135. Today, our guest is Larry Goins. Larry is a longtime real estate investor, having bought his very first real estate investment property over 30 years ago. Well, with that much experience, Larry brings so much wisdom and advice on how to buy your very first real estate investment property using maybe one of my favorite strategies, which is seller financing what I like most, though, is Larry describes being a real estate investor as a problem solver and using many tools in your tool bag to solve those problems. So we're going to get more into that in the episode. So without further ado, let's jump into today's conversation. All right, today I welcome on the show Larry Goins. Hey, Larry, thanks so much for joining us. What's going on, man? How you been? Hey, doing well. How about yourself? Man, I am doing awesome. Just having fun and making money. I love it. I love it. Well, hey, Larry, did you tell the audience members a little bit about yourself, how you got started investing in real estate and kind of your journey up to this point? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Man, my, my very first deal was 30 years ago. I've done been doing deals over 30 years. I did my first deal in 1986. It was actually an FHA non-qualifying assumable loan, believe it or not, right? Yeah, and, awesome. uh, and I did that deal a long, long time ago. But uh, you, you name it, I've done it. I've done wholesaling, landlording, lease options, subject to short sales, all kind of stuff, right? Commercial, residential, triple net lease. I'm on mobile home parks. I've done, uh, I bought and sold notes. I've created notes, seller financing, all kind of stuff. Yeah. So when you've been in the game for 30 years, like you have, you see a lot of things. So yeah, lots of broad experience there. And I know you've got a ton of experience helping newer investors get into this game and help people kind of get that first deal. So I kind of want to talk about that today. You know, we've got a younger audience out there, Larry, and a lot of people looking to get that first deal. But, you know, as you can imagine, in a lot of markets today, it's pretty hard to do that. You know, lots of uh, hurdles and obstacles to overcome. So you know, what advice would you have out there to maybe that first time investor, you know, getting that first deal, what kind of advice, actionable content tips would you have for somebody like that? Well, you know, I've actually got some, uh, I've got some, some partner students in my office this week for, uh, for, they come to my office and spend three days with me and, you know, and they paid a lot of money to be there. Right. And, some of them have been studying real estate for years. I'm talking five years, 10 years, never done a deal. Oh, so yeah. I bet at least five times this week, I have said, write this down, ready, fire, aim, right? Fire, aim. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> ready, fire, aim. Because there's nothing going to be perfect when you start it. It's like one guy said, you know, if you start out on a trip, from San Diego to Houston, Texas, you don't start out and wait to start out until all the lights are green, right? Yeah, yeah. I like you got to start right from where you are. You can't wait for all the lights to get green. You got to do the best you can. You're going to make some mistakes. It's going to happen. But the key is just to get started and take action and do the best you can and find somebody that you know, like, and trust that you can latch on to, like all of your listeners, right? I mean, they, they like you, they trust you, they're listening to you. You bring on people like myself and other people, and they can learn from all of us, right? And there's plenty of information out there. If you're in a situation where you're not really sure what to do, there's plenty of information out there, whether it's online or you hire a coach or mentor or whatever. Yeah, I love it. 
Well, Larry, let's kind of go back to some of your experience. So you bought that very first house with that FHA assumable loan at the time, which was a thing, you know, when you first got started in this industry, what came after that and how'd you grow your portfolio from there? Well, um, basically I've done a lot of different kinds of real estate, right? There's only really a few things about real estate. I hate, I hate tenants. Okay. (laughs) I know you don't want to hear that, right? (laughs) But I hate tenants. All right. And I hate rehabs and I hate short sales. Those are the only three things about real estate that I hate. Now I have tenants, but my tenants own businesses or if they're residential tenants, they actually do lease options, right? Or seller financing. So I have people that pay cash flow, but they're not just straight up tenants, right? They're what I call homeowners in training. So I've done, and I still do quite a bit of wholesaling right? A lot of wholesaling. And I will tell you, you know, wholesaling is probably one of the quickest ways there is to get started. I also have another method I call filthy riches, which we have a lot of people that are brand new, never done a deal before, and they're able to do their first deal with that method. However, wholesaling is probably the quickest way to get them started. But even with wholesaling, when you're making the phone ring, you've got to know how to put a deal together because not every deal is going to be buy it at 70% of after repaired value minus repairs, closing costs, and your profit. Not every deal is going to be that. I just bought a deal. We just sold it today, actually. Well, we got a contract to sell it today. I got a deal last Thursday. Check this out. This guy calls from some of my marketing, right? I, and I, and I, I do about 25,000 pieces a month in direct mail, okay? So he called and 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 our lead manager teed it up for me and we were about $20,000 apart he wanted 82,000 for it and i wanted to pay him about 60 right <clears throat> so he happened to mention to me three or four times jacob that i don't need the money i don't need the money i don't need the money so here's what i told him i said well you know you've mentioned to me a few times you don't need the money yeah, I said, here's, here's something that I've helped other people with uh, many times in the past. Since you don't need the money and you're going to, to have a huge tax bill when you sell this property, how about if you finance the property for me, right? You're going to get interest on your money. It's going to be secured by your house and you'll be able to take what's called the installment sale and you'll only pay taxes on the money in the year you receive it. So if the payment is $500 a month, that's $6,000 a year. You're only paying taxes on $6,000 a year instead of the whole $82,000. And that way I can give you what you want for the property. And he said, well, you know, Larry, I kind of like the sound of that. He said, how much would the payment be? I said, well, let's take a look. Let's see what an $82,000 payment would be on at, um, at the market rate. I said, what's the market interest rates? I said, it's probably in the fours. He said, my son's getting a loan right now. He says it's going to be close to five. I said, okay, 5% is good. So I figured a payment, 5% interest, $82,000. I never mentioned the word down payment. I never said the word down payment. (laughs) Now now we're working, yeah. Right. So the payment on $82,000 at 5% for 20 years is $541, right? Okay. So I said we could we could get you five hundred and forty one dollars, uh, and you know, in that way, it's going to help you out on your tax bill. Plus, you won't have to worry about, you know, if you rent it out, tenants, trash, toilets, and termites, right? So he said, I like the sound of that. So we FedExed him the contract with a return FedEx envelope, right? Actually, right. <clears throat> this is a little bit on human nature and on building a rapport. He's retired from UPS. So instead of FedExing him the paperwork, we UPSed him the paperwork, right? There you go. Okay. He even said, hey, Larry, I really appreciate you using UPS. I'm retired from there. They pay my pension, and I really appreciate you using the company, right? So so we sent it. He sent it back. We went and looked at the property, and we already have it sold for $99.9 with $18,000 down, right? All I'm going to do is assign my contract. The buyer's going to step into my place and they're going to buy the property 
and they're going to do a little work to it, and then they're going to lease it out. And they've got non-bank qualifying bank interest rate financing at 80% loan to value. You can't get that anywhere. So all I did was wholesale a seller finance deal. That's all I did. So I'm going to make $18,000 on it, right? My buyer's paying the closing cost. Right. And I'm going to walk away with 18 grand net. Now, if I had been stuck on, I can only pay you $60,000 for it, right? Right. I wouldn't have another closing coming up in the next three weeks that I'm making 18 grand on. Might have not had that first deal to begin with. Right. Exactly. So the, so the key is, Number one, you got to take action. Number two, you got to have as many tool, tools in your toolbox as possible so you know how to put it put together a deal that other people would throw away as a dead lead. Yeah, well, some of the listeners out there, Larry, might be thinking, well, come on, Larry, I thought you were going to tell me how to get my first deal in my market. There's no way that's going to work. Nobody's you know, motivated to sell me a property on seller financing. But there are a surprising number of people who are willing to do this strategy. So how are you finding these properties and these particularly these owners? Well, we do a lot of marketing. Uh, we make the phone ring. The, our phone rings on Mondays. Every Monday, our phone rings about 300 times. On Tuesday, it rings about 200 times. On Wednesday, it rings about 100 times. And then 50, 25, whatever. And then Monday, it starts all over again, right? Yeah, okay. So we get a ton of calls and they all go through a lead manager and then the lead manager takes the calls, they set it up and then I get on the phone with them or my, one of my other acquisition managers and we negotiate the deal. Yeah, okay. So essentially, you know, let's let's kind of break down this uh, strategy of, you know, buying seller financing just to like, you know, break it down and, you know, really put some numbers to it. So you're going to go to this owner and have them carry the note, meaning you may not even in this scenario actually have to put down a down payment. But what that allows you to do is free up some of your capital to do more deals. You don't have to go to the bank and you kind of get that velocity of your money working really quickly. Right. So all of a sudden you've bought and sold a house within what is it? Maybe 90 days here, you know, very quickly. So, you know, what are some other benefits of, you know, doing this seller financing model that you can think of? Well, that's a great, great question. I have a model called Filthy Riches, and, and it's all about buying cheap houses and then selling them for three to six times what you paid. For example, uh, I've bought a lot of houses for three, four, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. And one of the reasons that so many people love this model is there's people out there, like you said, there's a lot of people out there that are brand new, they're young, maybe they don't have a lot of money to work with. But heck, you can put a $5,000 house on a credit card right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in theory you can. So think about this. If you bought a house for five grand, you turn around and sell it for 30 grand with owner financing as is. We don't touch it. We don't rehab it. You sell it for 30 grand. You get a couple thousand dollars down. You're going to finance 28,000, 9% interest for 10 years. Your payment's going to be three, three sixty four ninety two a month, right? You just do that. Well, I've done a lot of them, right? <laughs> I've done a lot of them. So, um, yeah, your payment's going to be, you know, just under $400 a month. And then you've got a $28,000 asset bringing you in $364 a month. And, and, and look, I'm not dealing with tenants. They're buying the house. So they're paying taxes, insurance, repairs, and maintenance, right? I don't pay any of that. That's net to me. And, and I only have $3,000 in it. And think about it. If I'm bringing in $4,200 a year, that's over 100% return. Actually, it's 144% return. Or maybe it's 141. I can't remember. But it's 140% return on your money. Is that sweet or what? Yeah, yeah. Now we're really talking here. So, you know, you can see why this seller financing model is really appealing now, Larry, in my personal, you know, endeavors of real estate investing, I find that, you know, this is always my go-to, you know, my very first tool I'm going to pull out of my tool belt, like you kind of alluded to earlier. But I find that it doesn't always work. You know, sometimes the seller really does want, you know, you know, their, their cash up front payment, you know, and maybe they're going to buy another house. So, you know, what would be the second tool in your tool belt if this, this, this strategy doesn't really, you know, work for that seller? Well, I'm going to make an all cash as is offer. And I'm going to tell them, look, you don't have to fix up the house. You don't have to do any repairs, no more maintenance. 
You can forget about paying taxes, upkeep, lawn care, all that. You know, the advantage of working with somebody like me, and I say, whether it's me or any other investor, because I want them to lump investors into one category, right? And I do that because I don't want them to think, well, this, well, Larry, you're, you're an investor and you only offer me this. So I'm going to call the next investor. Maybe they'll offer me more. So I tell them, you know, when you sell your house to an investor, whether it's me or anybody else, right? You know, does that make sense? Yeah, it's really subtle, but yeah, I like how you work that in there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you don't have to pay taxes, insurance, repairs, maintenance, none of that other stuff. I'll pay you all cash. I'll buy it in its as-is condition. You don't have to deal with fixing your property up and, and showing it for six to 12 months, hoping you find that one buyer that loves your house, loves the neighborhood, loves the way it's fixed up, and then you hope they can qualify for a mortgage, right? Yeah. And then you hope the inspection comes in and they don't ask you to make a bunch of repairs, additional repairs from the inspection and nickel and dime you to death. You know, basically by working with me or any other investor, you can have your money in less than 30 days. Yeah, I love it. So that allows you to, you know, get into this property and then you've got a multitude of exit strategies on the back end. You can go out and, you know, sure. do the seller financing on the back end. You can just wholesale it to another investor. You can flip it, you can hold it for a rental. So yeah, it's like, you know, I love the uh, tool belt analogy you made earlier in the show. You know, you've got all these tools, you know, the first one, if it works for the for the seller, great. If not, you know, reach in the bag, get another tool. And then the same thing on the other side of it, you know, renting it out, selling it, flipping it, whatever you're going to do. So yeah, really cool. So let's talk about that filthy riches uh, program that you mentioned earlier. Let's dig into that. What exactly does that look like? Well, I teach people how to buy houses anywhere from $1,500 up to 50,000 and sell them for three to six times what they paid and get returns anywhere from in the forties like 43, 48% up to 788% return on your money. And you're basically buying dirt cheap properties nobody else wants. And then you're turning around and selling them with owner financing to either a, an investor that wants to be a landlord because they're going to do a little bit of work to it and put a tenant in it. Or you're selling it to a person that wants to fix it up and move into it, right? Like a first time home buyer. And, um, you can do them either with a lease option or a land contract or a mortgage or deed of trust. Now, I know you're in the state of Texas. They don't allow land contracts more than six months in Texas. So what you do is you do a six-month rental agreement, then a six-month land or lease option, and then you convert it to a mortgage if they stick. Because most of them, if they're going to default, they're going to default within the first 12 months. Yeah. Every other state... We do a 12-month lease option, and then if they stick, we'll convert them to a land contract. Yeah, okay. Well, Larry, there's some people out there in our more expensive markets across the nation like Seattle and Denver and Austin and places like that are going, Larry, there are no $1,500 houses in my market. There are no $50,000 houses in my market. Is this a model that people can make work outside of their market, you know, investing remotely? You know, that's a great, great question. I'm glad you brought that up because the majority of our students – are actually doing this model remote. Some of our most successful students live on the West Coast where the prices look like phone numbers. And <laughs> foreign phone numbers, right? Yes. And they're buying in areas like Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas, Arkansas, Kentucky, uh, Missouri, Ohio, Pennsylvania. All those areas have plenty of properties and, and we're not looking for a $1,500 house. We're not looking for a $5,000 house because if you go looking for a $5,000 house, it's a blower upper, not a fixer upper. What we're, <laughs> looking for, what we're looking for are houses that might be listed for $20,000 and we're going to pick them up for five or 10,000, right? We're going to get them at a discount and not many people are looking at or looking for these kind of houses so they sit on the market a lot longer than every other type of property because there's not as many buyers out there for them. So we go in and scoop them up and don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm making it sound simple. It's it, or I'm making it sound easy. It's not easy. If, there, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But if you can be diligent about it and you can make offers, then you can get some of these deals and you can earn huge returns. And the cool thing is, 
doing this model, you don't even have to use your own money. In fact, I'll finance de a deal for you. I finance a lot of Filthy Riches deals for Filthy Riches students, and they don't even have to come up with the, with the money. And I'll do it with no interest. I just charge a flat $1,500 underwriting fee, and then I help them do the deal. I help them put the deal together, and they find the deal. I underwrite the deal, make sure it's a good deal, and we're both going to make money. And I charge them a $1,500 underwriting fee, and I'll fund the deal, and then they turn, they buy it, sell it, and sell their note to pay me off. And they pay me my $1,500, and then they cash out on the profit. Yeah, it's a really cool model. And uh, something you brought up I want to dig into a little deeper is, you know, the logistics of this. You know, let's kind of walk us through maybe some of the processes and systems and procedures you know that work well and you have set up for, you know, doing this model out of state. That's a great, great question. We buy a lot of HUD houses. I wrote a book called HUD Homes Half Off, how to buy HUD houses for pennies on the dollar. And we still buy a lot of HUD houses. Uh, I'm buying them all over the Carolinas. We still do about three to five HUD houses a month. Even in today's market, when there's not near as many HUD houses on the market as there used to be, right? But with HUD, you can go wide, especially if you're doing this filthy riches model, where you can, you can be sitting in Houston, Texas, or in, in Oregon, or in California, or in Denver, Colorado, you can be bidding on HUD houses in Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, you know, the Carolinas, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and, and you're just, you're, you're really, you're, you're shotgunning it, and you're bidding on a lot of properties, and it's very easy to do because all bids for HUD houses are done online by, on the computer, right? Yeah. So it's a pretty simple process. So these are essentially foreclosure properties that the government has foreclosed on. And now once you get this house under contract, you know, what's the next step from there? Well, once you get it under contract, immediately we send somebody out, even if it's five states away, you send somebody out to take pictures. They're going to take about 50 pictures, every room, any mechanical items, any repair areas, all four sides of the house, any outbuildings or garages, and the street view both ways, right? And then when we get those pictures, we're going to start marketing the property right away, right? We start marketing the property, you know, why rent when you can own payments less than rent payments to fit your budget. You know, we're looking for a deserving family with a reasonable down payment, you know, second chance opportunity to own a home, stop throwing your money away on rent and the phone rings off the hook. Right. And then when we find a buyer, then we send them to what's called an RMLO, Residential Mortgage Loan Officer, to originate the loan. That just keeps us in, in compliance with Dodd-Frank. And they'll underwrite the loan and make sure the person has what's called the ability to pay. They figure out their bills and their income and make sure they have the ability to pay. And then we close the deal and we either sell the note or keep the note or whatever. You can do these in your retirement account too, which is another pretty cool thing. Yeah. Okay. And this thing is, uh, what I like about this model is it's pretty scalable and you know, the remote aspect is really cool too. You don't have to go out there and touch the, touch the property, fix it up. You know, you're kind of removing the old tenants, termites, toilets kind of aspect of real wow. estate investing. So yeah, it's a really appealing model. And I think maybe the most important thing is you can get started for very low entries. So, you know, that's a really cool thing for, you know, the audience members out there who haven't yet got that first deal under contract. So yeah, really cool stuff there. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, there is a very low barrier to entry with this. I've seen more people do their very first deal with this model than I have any other model. And I know wholesaling is typically the way most people get started, but I've seen more people do their first deal with this model than anything else. Yeah, I love it. Well, Larry, it's been a real cool conversation. As we're wrapping up here, we've got a lightning round. We ask every one of our guests, are you up for it? Sure, man. Let's do it. All right, cool. Well, the very first question we have is, what was your biggest hurdle getting started investing in real estate? And then what'd you do to overcome that? I thought I had to know everything before I ever got started. And once I found somebody else that was doing the same thing, I just jumped in and started doing it. I started making offers and I did my first deal. Your first deal gives you all the confidence you need to move forward. So the bottom line is just go out there and do it. Just take action. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely. Well, Larry, do you have a personal habit that contributes to your success? I think you need to have balance, right? Um, 
I think you need to have balance. You've got to be physically fit. You know, I try to run three to five days a week. And, uh, and, and also you got to be spiritually fit. You've got to have some personal development, some growth. Um, I try to read at least one book every week or two. I uh, used to be able to do it every week, but with a lot going on, it's about every week or two, I try to read a book. So there's so many great books out there, but I actually, I don't read anymore. I listen to books on Audible. I love Audible because you can listen to an eight hour book in four to six hours at one and a half to two. <laughs> I do that two. all the time. Yes. Yeah. So I love it. I love it. Actually, studies have shown that you comprehend more as well. And then you also have to be perfecting your craft. You also have to be learning. If you want to learn real estate, then you got to, you got to invest in your education. You know, I've had people come to my office looking for a job and they say, I've been wanting to get into real estate for 10 years. First thing I ask them is, well, what have you done about it? What education? Well, I've watched a couple of YouTube videos and I watched Flip This House on TV. <laughs> yeah. no, no, they're not serious about it, right? Yeah. Sure. They're not serious about it. So you've got to invest in yourself. The, 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 <clears throat> the most important piece of real estate you'll ever invest in is the six inches between your ears. I uh, love it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, really cool there. Well, Larry, do you have an online resource that you find valuable? Online resource. Man, there's so many of them. So many of them. There's so many apps. There's so many online resources. I mean, I love Zillow. We look, we, we, we pull our comps on Zillow. We pull our comps on realquest.com and we use some apps like land glide and uh, deal machine is another app where you can look up and see who owns a property and send them out a postcard and pick up the phone and call them right from there. There's so many different sources. I love upwork.com because you can hire a VA for literally two or $3 an hour to do a lot of these tasks that you don't have to do or don't want to do. So there's just so many different resources out there. There's never been a better time to get into real estate that has more tools. But the most important thing I want to tell everyone is don't get bogged down, right? And don't get bogged down in paralysis of analysis, right? You've got to be able to pick a few tools, you know, use one at a time or implement or add one at a time to what you're already doing. And start off doing everything yourself. Don't think you have to have the latest gadget or gizmo to get started. All you really need is a motivated seller and a cell phone to get you started. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely. Well, Larry, what book would you recommend to the listeners and why? Oh, my gosh. Uh, do you mind if I throw out a few? The, please, yeah. The more the merrier. <laughs> Lessons from the Richest Man Who Ever Lived by Stephen K. Scott. Uh, Lessons from the Richest Man Who Ever Lived. That's a great book. The One Thing by Gary Keller. Uh, Four Disciplines of Execution is another great book. Rhinoceros Success by Scott Alexander is another great book. It's required reading for everyone in our office. If you're looking to scale your business, Traction, the book Traction by Gina Whitman, and the book Rocket Fuel as well are also great books man i could go on and on the 10x rule you know if you're not first you're last there's so many books out there i've got a huge recommended reading list i, I love to read i love to listen and i love to learn although i gotta tell you i only have a high school diploma i don't have a college degree well you seem like a fairly educated guy and i think you're doing just fine so we won't hold it against you there. <laughs> Thanks. Larry, last question we've got for you in the lightning round. If you were to give advice to your 20-year-old self to get started investing in real estate, what would that be? Just do it now. Do it now, right now. And create passive income early, right? Because so many people, they just want to wholesale, wholesale, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, right? Well, and when you're wholesaling, every month you go from hero to zero. You have to start over, right? I mean, you're a young guy and you're buying and holding and there'll come a time when you don't have to even work anymore because you'll have 100% passive income and you have checks coming in every month 
whether you want them or not, they're showing up, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good problem to have. And yeah, you're so right there. You know, that passive income is kind of the name of the game here on the real estate way to wealth and freedom. So we preach a lot. And uh, yeah, so really cool there. Get started early is essentially the, you know, the summation of your advice there. So yeah, I love it. Awesome. Well, Larry, hey, it's been a really fun conversation. I think you've got some really good and unique tips for you know those audience members who haven't got yet that first deal, or maybe you're just now getting into the game on how to get started, how to buy that first deal, how to find it, how to negotiate that contract, and then what to do with it once you've got it. So, you know, you're actually no stranger to helping people get started investing in real estate. You have a podcast called the Brain Pick a Pro Podcast along with the Bragg Radio Network. So tell us a little bit about that and also just, you know, give us some places where our audience members can come to check you out, learn more about you and connect with you if they'd like. Sure, sure. Well, Brain Pick a Pro is a podcast very similar to yours where we interview others and we're getting ready to have you on as well, as you know. And uh, Bragg Radio Network, I'm a firm believer in giving back. And our Bragg Radio Network, Bragg is an acronym for Be Rich and Generous. We want to teach people how to go out and make a lot of money in real estate, but we also want them to be generous with their blessings of time and money and help others. And as far as for some resources, if they want to reach out to me, I mentioned the HUD book. Uh, I'll be glad to give away a copy of the HUD book. It'll be a free digital version at uh, freehudbook.com. That's free hudbook.com and also if they have an interest in the filthy riches model where we're buying these cheap houses and selling them for three to six times just go to filthyriches.com and they'll be able to uh, get a seven-part video training series and sign up for a webinar there that teaches the entire model from start to finish yeah, awesome. Well, we really appreciate that gift, Larry. So that's freehudbook.com for a free ebook around how to find and buy these HUD homes. And then if you're interested in that Filthy Riches program, that's filthyriches.com. Well, hey, Larry, thanks so much for coming on the show today. It's been a lot of fun talking with you. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Larry. Thanks a lot. episode today with our guest, Larry Goins. Well, what I really like about Larry's take on real estate investing is his systematic approach to generating leads, negotiating deals, making offers, and ultimately buying and selling real estate deals. When you build systems and processes, it allows you to grow and scale your business, which means you are working on your business and not in your business, allowing you to grow your real estate portfolio. So great stuff today and really appreciate Larry coming on the podcast. Hey, for all those resources that Larry mentioned, including that free HUD Houses book, you can check that out in the link in the show notes. For more information and resources or to connect with me, you can visit www.jacobayers.com. Now go out there and engineer the lifestyle you want. You've been listening to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast, providing you actionable content to build your real estate empire. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for personal advice. The opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have a potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom, LLC, exclusively.